I'm not wearing makeup today. <sighs> Don't look. I was. Are you not? To film. You're wearing a little bit. A uh, blush. blush. Yeah. That's it. But I have nothing else on. I didn't fill in my eyebrows. Well, this is after a long day at Ooh. the shop. Okay, so oh, can you guys see? Yeah, see what's happening back here. It's insane. The wipers are probably going to be like Aww. in the background. I know. <laughs> so, hi, welcome back to week of. I actually wasn't going to start today, but I was going to start today since we were in traffic in a snowstorm. I know. We had to leave work at North Shore early today because of the roads. Um, Lauren was having a meltdown. I was like, what's the big deal? And we came outside. I was like, yeah. Oh, and was... I almost slipped and fell in the parking lot like three times. Oh my God. It's so icy already. It's like a legit blizzard. It escalated so, so fast. fast. It was sunny this morning. I was wearing sunglasses when I picked she her up. She didn't even and... wear a jacket. No. I'm it's minus three right now. It's so effing cold. It's a blizzard outside. But this is fine. We're not like barely moving. We're on stop. Yeah. It's going to take us like an hour to get home. Tomorrow's gonna be minus 15. I'm pretty sure they're gonna cancel my haircut. You could probably walk to your haircut. No. I'm not no? a freak like you that wants to walk in the snow. I wanna walk in it so bad. Go, I'll meet you at the freeway entrance. No. You'll probably get there before me. Well, then I'll be covered in snow in your car. That's true. I, I was planning on going for a walk tonight when we get home and after we make, we're making shepherd's pie for dinner. And I have a glass of wine and I'm gonna watch Game of Thrones even though I should be editing. Glass of wine. Oh you can have a glass of Martinelli's. I don't even have any, I didn't get any yet. I need to though. You can have a glass of pomegranate juice. It's Yum. just like delicious. It's just like wine. Red wine. But not Do you have like um Oh you're we're using your phone to I was like, maybe you have some like questions in the bank. Hmm. Maybe I have questions, questions in the bank. Questions in the bank, Shawty, let you drink. What was we were saying <laughs> earlier? My, my neck. neck, my neck, my, my, my vagina <laughs> hurts. <laughs> you guys, um, if you're gonna get pregnant, I highly recommend you work out your pelvic floor before you get pregnant um, because it is not fun having How do you work out your floor. pelvic floor? There's like all these exercises you can do and you can do kegels too when you go pee. Oh. I just, I underestimate. Are like sit-ups and crunches count as pelvic floor exercises? I don't Because no. like when, do you remember when Dwight and Gabe were having that like pelvic floor <laughs> competition? Kind what of. were they doing? Planks? <laughs> Wait, okay, what was I looking for? Oh yeah, questions. By the way, you guys can't see it, but I have a massive plant in the, in the trunk. Oh my god. Can you see any of it? <laughs> no, it's all blocked. It's right... Let's see if I can give you a sneak peek. No, it's, no, it's right behind your seat. It's massive. I'll show you. It's, I'll film Vince taking it out of the car. It's a lot. I should probably cancel that Euphorbia pickup tonight. Oh yeah, unless they have like snow tires and they don't care. True. Right? Yeah. I mean, if they want to cancel, they can cancel. And I don't think it's going to get like cold damage just from being out in the thing from the front door to their car. No, it's a succulent, it's fine. Yeah. My poor baby. So I sold my Euphorbia Trigona, my big one. I'm having feelings, I'm having some mixed feelings about it, but I yeah. just think overall it's probably better to not have a big poisonous succulent before well, baby comes. I and think. plus like the, the amount of times you've considered selling it. Yeah, that's true. I think it's just time. She and wanted me to put it in the coffee shop that I was installing for it, and I was like, I can't because it's like spiky. It's a liability. If a child like runs into it or something. Yeah, and I don't want my child running into it. Yeah. Well, so, I found I found one that's like very generic question. Oh, cool. If you completely started your collection over, what would you do differently? I would not hoard philodendron <laughs> like crazy at peak prices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or just, I wouldn't, yeah, and I also wouldn't be like hoarding skindapsis. Yeah. 
like cool ooh this new variety that's like extra silver or it's like a little bit less silver in a different way uh, yeah i wish i had the thought process that i do now back then when like figuring out like who's actually gonna come home and stay with you long term because mm -hmm. i think before it was more of the collector's mentality of like i have a whole collection i of don't skin have this in. so i want skin it <laughs> skin um uh, yeah so i think that's something i would do differently for sure i would have um focused more on like getting my anthurium big versus getting my philodendrons big because I would have more like flowering size anthuriums to breed That's with true. now. I wish I had been brave enough to pop bigger before because mm. like I really was doing like the one or two sizes up not like the five sizes up. Yeah. What do you think was like the biggest waste of money other than like plants that you wish you hadn't like hoarded? Um, In terms of like plant care supplies, techniques? Probably those damn slitted orchid pots. Oh yeah. We spent a lot of money on yeah. those and they just ended yeah. up chopping roots off. So yeah, I wish I hadn't gotten those. I wish I hadn't um, what else did I used to get? I'm trying to think of like grow lights, but like I did really like the dope. I spent a lot of money on domias. Me too. But I did like them. At the time I did like them, but then yeah, I I if we had just started with arenas, we probably would never have switched. No, no. I don't regret the cabinets that I had. I feel like they all kind of served their purpose at the time and I enjoyed having them. Mm-hmm. But now I'm Mills Bowless. I just have my red stuff. So I feel like fun. the only thing that for me was a waste of money was like the very small exos. Yeah, actually that's a good point. Like the, the mini, ones. Like the mini yeah. ones. They like they were good for like props, but then it's like you There's could just only put it in a so, dome. Yeah, like once they get to any sort of size, they can't fit in there. Mm -hmm. So you can't grow anything long term except for those like really small terrarium plants. Yeah. The things with compact growth patterns. Mm -hmm. I have to pee. This is not good. Oh no, did you not go before we left? No. And we're not, it says our arrival is in an hour. Why <laughs> Why big Facebook plant groups have posts that sometimes people are looking for fights in comments? Have you noticed that people are just looking to fight lately? Like they're, they're kind of riled up and very emotional. Like the community is extra spicy, spicy these days. There's, um, yeah, there's I, definitely. I I've noticed a lot of like tension. Mm -hmm. Um, or people like reading and blowing things out of proportion a lot, but I don't really know why. I don't know either. And it like kind of like happened all of a sudden, like all at the same time, all for totally different things. Mm -hmm. It's not like one particular issue. It's just like little fires here. But yeah, and it like reminds me of 2020, but back then we could blame it on the pandemic and people being stressed out and stuff and they're yeah. just taking it out. And they're like super like cooped up at home. Mm -hmm releasing pent-up energy but now I, I don't really know what it is because i don't feel it like that sort of like rage yeah the that... rage um and it's interesting i don't know if it's because i'm pregnant but like i'm not gonna lie back during covid when there was drama like it was entertaining mm -hmm. to some extent like i'd never fuel the fire but to just like watch from the vice like a, I guess as a, a bystander, bystander yeah. yeah it was just like oh yeah what's going on with that now but the drama and like the pettiness and fighting that's happening now it's actually stressful like it's like it's, i don't yeah. want to like immerse myself in it i just want to like get away from it and like i think sometimes it's being created out of nothing yeah totally well that like literally is being created out of nothing like i've seen things happen where it's like where did that come from that came out of nowhere so and like, unprovoked super unprovoked and i don't and understand like is it i wondered if it was because the anthurium niche is it's almost like a mini 2020 with mm -hmm. like people trying to like compete with each other on like who has the coolest collection who can buy plants yeah more or quicker or i don't know what's going on i'm definitely seeing posts where it's like they're intentionally posting something because they know it's going to cause poking at things yeah, yeah it's gonna make the comment section spicy and to me yeah. it comes across as boredom from these people because i personally would never 
in intentionally post something just to be like, oh yeah, it's gonna stir something up. Yeah, and I also speculate that maybe like some some people are like kind of new to the plant community. They might not be super new to plants, but they joined social media communities quite recently mm -hmm. when it was there was some like plant drama here and there so they think it's super normal and then like mm -hmm. they automatically are in that drama mindset all the time yep um yeah but there's definitely drums and just nastiness going around right now and i'm just trying to stay away from it honestly mm. if i can if i shall be spared please <laughs> i'm just focusing on i just don't have the child. time for it I mean, literally. like to be involved in it. Yeah. 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 So sometimes, sometimes I get if you're really bored, mm -hmm. then it's like a lot of entertainment. What are you doing? Why would you? You don't have the right of way. What kinds of house plants, rare or common, did you never like the look of since you saw it? Mariso mm -hmm. Verde. I can't say that because I owned one. You like that one particular one, I think, because of that one particular leaf and the way yeah. it was presenting, like very contrasty. It's not that like um, kind of minty speckly. It was like high contrast. Mm -hmm. I never liked the Bobsy either. Yeah, Bobsy okay is either. like on top of mine right now because was Jesse like offering it because he's yeah. he's getting rid of his Bobsy. Bobsy. I straight up was like, yeah, no, I'm no, good. thank you. <laughs> Don't think no. Yeah. Oh, and then another one. This is just like a replay of my philodendron video that went up two weeks ago mm -hmm. um well i'm saying this in the future it's gonna go up saturday for us in the, in the present day but the worst vetchia oh i used to own that one especially the oreo one. Oh, i thought it was kind of cool but i never loved it but it, it was one of those purchases where i was like i went to the shop i lined up because it was like peak pandemic and like went there and there wasn't that much stuff and i was like sure find you i remember I that day when you went actually yeah. oh, what but was you went... for? I, I was going like almost every week looking for a dean mcdowell was that why you were there mm -hmm. i can't stand people that like just go in the fast lane and then they want to cut in last minute um, yeah if you guys are you, watching you, fully you, guys are, knew you guys know what you had doing. to be in the right lane to merge onto the highway and then when you don't let them in, they're just, they rage, they rage. I look dead. This is the worst traffic ever. We've probably moved like 50 meters this, I know. this entire time. Would, Would you know. or Charmaine ever consider opening a plant shop? Nope. Knowing how much work and stress it is, no. I think you have to be built a certain way to be able to run this kind of business and I don't think that I'm built for it. A plant shop, like a proper plant business that sells plants? No, probably not. To have to rely on that as my business, I feel like it would be too much. Cause like not even just the stress of like retail business, mm -hmm. but the stress of like plant prices going up and down, just like not knowing how the industry is gonna go all the time and mm -hmm. having no control over it. Yeah. That would be like, I, I, that's a kind of instability. <laughs> this world Everybody is so angry oh right gosh. now. That's the kind of instability that um, I don't think I could deal with long term. Yeah, I think you have to like have that type of personality where you're like, I'm okay with accepting a level of risk. Mm -hmm. And there's some people that are like, I'd rather just have, um, like know what's coming. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I'm like somewhere in the middle of that. Like if you're, not, yeah, if not, you're confident on like, um, being able to like see slightly ahead. Yeah. But at the same time, like it wouldn't, it's one of those jobs I feel like wouldn't feel like work for the plant care side of running a plant business but like the the sales and the shipping and stuff like that would feel like it would work. it would really stress me out honestly yeah but like you know when we get to work these shifts at north shore like it really doesn't like the days go by so fast in my opinion and it's like we have fun doing it yeah and it's not like sometimes it's like more manual labor and you get really dirty and grimy yeah but at the end of the day like oh my 
Yeah, this guy's holding up an entire lane, like past the street light just to get in because he wants to cut. Yeah. It's next level. I think I wouldn't mind because we floated the idea Did before we? of like a coffee shop, plant shop. Oh, thing. yeah. But that would be like the coffee shop is the main, the main business yeah. yeah and then plants being sort of like an afterthought or like kind of a side thing mm -hmm. i would love that i think that could still work because i know how to run a profitable coffee shop yeah. i know i could do it except she's moving so <laughs> yeah. yeah it's gonna be an hour to alice's house and then i bet you it's gonna be like another hour for me to get home well at least it's not a blizzard anymore it kind of stopped what are your 2024 plant goals are you asking me or are you asking them? You. Asking them <laughs> and then nobody answers. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that's, that's great. A good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh, that's I never thought of that one. <laughs> if I could think about it for you, you probably just want to get more of your Anthurium to flower. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Breed more. Breed more. I would love to live in a spider mite free world. Oh, that was one of our goals last goal. year. That's a good goal. I think we're getting closer because we're using mites more. We have our special alcohol um, oh, yeah. concoction and well I have less plants now. Mm -hmm. Um and I certainly have less plants that are spider mite magnets. You mean your philodendron? And I got rid of some allocations to both <laughs> philodendrons, like velvety philodendrons. Mm. I don't think I have a single velvety philodendron right now that has like a bunch of foliage that I can think of. Oh. Cause like what I don't have what about glorious. Your dean? It's not velvety, right? Oh, but it okay. is kind of a spider mite magnet. But no velvety ones. My gloriosum's back to a stump because I chopped all the leaves off. It's covered in spider mites. Ooh. Yeah, I don't own a Milano anymore. No splendid. Mm, no glory. Oh yeah, no glorious. No glorious. I do have a glorious prop, like the one from you. It's still growing in my exo. Oh. Oh my gosh. My 2024 goals, I want to own more weirdo trailing plants. Where to get them though? I know. I would, I would I know. love to try a Hupersia. I'm just scared. But I'm, I've been wanting to try it for a long time. I do it. I killed one and that was enough for me. Like, I, I just want to try because like part of me is like, does it really need high humidity? Can it survive? If it has a root system, can it survive outside of an enclosure? Well, I put mine inside of an. I put mine outside of an enclosure, and it didn't. It didn't live. Well, the funny thing is, like, some nurseries here will sell cupertia, and like, it's just oh, art now. It's a greenhousey, but it's kind of like not a real nursery greenhouse. I mentioned a Hupersia on my channel before and people were saying that they've been able to grow it outside of a greenhouse, but I just don't know how. Yeah. Because I didn't have luck with it. And it's like, I would try it again if they were more affordable, but like, no. I mean, you can get it cheaper if you import it, but then you do the added stress of yeah. having to yeah. acclimatize it, so. Yeah, but it would be nice, which is why I just have a fake one now. I know. <laughs> it's like the fake one's pretty good. Yeah, it scratches yeah. that itch. It looks nice on my shelf. Yeah. I use those fake Persia in the coffee shop too. Looks good. I mean, honestly, those were good fake plants to mm -hmm. me. Like there's bad fake. Yeah. And there's there's good. Joking plants. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do once? your Ethereum like all grow out of your tent like they don't fit in your tent anymore i know i was hoping that like some of them would be able to stay in there and not outgrow it until the spring and then i'll start moving things out mm -hmm. um, like my ace is like it's growing quite wide and i think they normally do grow quite wide and it's like touching the top oh, of this, the, the shelf above it now so next leaf it's gonna be and i also wanted to um get into a bigger pot after this leaf too because it's getting pretty root bound mm -hmm. so i don't know it's they are gonna take up a lot of space i really wish i had room for a big tent same you do in your freaking basement i know but then like 
I'd be like, because the plant room's mine and the basement's Garen's. So I like, feel like I would just be taking over his space. Does he actually use that space with the couch? No, not really. You like that maximize Well, like he, he has like um, his Xbox there. Yeah. So he, he wanted that to be his like gaming corner, that comfy chair. Mm. I don't know, because I also, part of me is like, I don't know if my, if I get another tent, will I get as lucky without having like any fungal issues with a second tent? I think so, especially if it's in the basement where it's cooler. The cool and damp is like, oh, that's true. Mushroom's dream. That's true, actually. But anyway. But yeah, anywho. Um, so trailing plants for me, no spider mites. Mm -hmm. I'd like to size up certain plants. Um, like I want nice big majestic leaves again. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. I, I feel like I'm not. I'm not really setting too many goals because I don't want to disappoint myself. Just okay. Well, here's a question, like kind of goal related. If you could just put your entire plant buying budget together for the year mm -hmm. and like set your sight on one wish list plant you want to like check off. Oh, that's a really freaking good question. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have an answer, but I don't know if I like that answer. What was the first thing that came out to like, It doesn't have to be the final answer. A circus peanuts. Okay. I just really, really like that plant. It's so precious. But then at the same time, I'm like, I don't know if I want to say that my top wish list plant is an Ethereum. It's just you stubbornly holding on to philodendrons. But I love philodendrons. <laughs> but there aren't that many very well, well, there's like all these variegated versions of existing plants yeah. coming out of Asia now. But there aren't that many more to collect. Yeah, and I was saying that in my philodendron Q&A that like the reason why I have so many variegated philodendron on my wish list is because there's really nothing left that I can think of that mm -hmm. I'm like, I really need this plant. And so far, I haven't seen any like new hybrid that is like, wow. To me, I really like the Pink Glory. Yeah, that one's cute. It is cute. Yeah, I don't think I would own it though. No, I don't see you bringing home another philodendron anytime soon. Yeah. Do you have any? You probably don't have any wishlist philodendron at this point, not even variegated. No. Well, variegated gloriosum. No. Oh. I don't think I ever like was that interested in variegated gloriosum. I like. I think. I like the variegated tortum was quite cool. I like that. Uh, yeah, I want one. Mm -hmm. I think it would be even cooler if it's white variegation. I kind of like that it's not. It reminds me of like a caramel marble kind of. Like some of the colors that I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. Orangey, yellow, pink. Oh, I've only green. seen I only seen that one picture and it was yellow. Oh. It just looked like Florida Beauty, but there's been a, there's form. been a few different ones, but I think the yellow variegated would probably be my least wanted I guess mm -hmm. I think white would be really cool if there was like I'm just trying cool, to imagine actually. what green on green would look like if that would look green cool. on green would probably be cool if there was enough contrast between the green or else it would just look yeah. like because the leaves are so thin that yeah. you probably wouldn't see it Yeah, I think white would be the coolest for me but again, it's like one of those things, like if I never own any of these variegated philodendron that are on my wish list, like I wouldn't really care. Yeah, like, same. I wouldn't keep thinking about it. Like, oh, I wish I had one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, it would be nice just to have a little bit of like contrast yeah. to some of the philodendron, you know? So the first plant that came to mind was circus peanuts, but not really. Oh, what was yours? The no, for you. Oh, what was yours that you thought? Of? Um, I haven't, I haven't decided yet. One that would like I would actually put down the money for. Yeah. And I would just say like, I'll buy this, and I agree to not buy any other plants this year. I would maybe at the red vein dark phoenix. Oh yeah, red spider. Is that on your wish list? Yeah. Oh. 
I mean, it's it's not one that I'm like gonna be actively looking for, but yeah, it would be like cool to own. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just not super in a rush to keep bringing home Ethereum until I feel comfortable with them because I'm not comfortable with them yet out, outside of a greenhouse. Like I feel like we're still trying to like we're still trying to figure out our relationship, <laughs> you know. And especially over the winter, holy smokes, it's been rough. Really? All of my leaves are like, they look like they've been chomped on. Oh, in your living room. Yeah. The ones growing in the tent are fine. Mm. I'm... I mean, like, for a plant that you're nervous about, like, you got a wish list one, you always have the option of the tent to grow. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's true. Oh, another goal. I would like to get some... Um, illustrations on my Burley Marx's flame. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I think if you got it yours under a really strong light, like Soltec. Oh, that's true. I could, I just don't it's, know where you have your Soltec now. Is it like, they're any both close? in my plant room, but they're close. Like, is there a spot that you could get it close enough? Yeah, because I have one on a tripod now, and I just keep moving it around. Oh, mm. it's like kind of sucks that it's just like right there and kind of in the way but I like that I can keep sort of adjusting it and like I can put it really close like it's really strong but yeah, maybe yeah it is really strong or even like yeah I bet you Sansi would always work with big bulbs mm -hmm. I just don't like the color of the Sansi there's it's so like white it's so it's white. very white yeah it's like it's like bathroom 7,000. <laughs> yeah, so white. Why'd you guys make it so white? <laughs> I know, I wish it was a little bit warmer. Yeah. I only have one and I'm using it to grow. Oh, I want to get rid of my Florida ghost. I was surprised that it has lasted this long without being chopped. I, because there's like sentimental value in that plant. Yeah, but you can keep the, keep a cutting. It's not like you have to get rid of the whole thing. I know, thing. but even just a cutting, that has a leaf is already going to be like four feet wide. That's true. There's no way to make that plant small. You can grow it from a stick again. Yeah. It's huge, you guys. It's massive. It's, freak. it's a monster. You're going to do something about it once it hits the ceiling, and then you're going to be like, I should have done this sooner. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big and it's so sticky. Oh, God. The EFN. But the nice thing about Florida's is that like the EFN doesn't burn the leaves. Yeah, you can like leave it and it'll be fine. But then the second you touch it, you gotta wash your freaking hands. Speaking of sticky, did you get rid of the Nangri tents? Um, they're stumps now because the EFN took Just over get rid the of entire it. leaves. No, oh, I want it still. Oh. <laughs> that stupid guy, he's so sticky. I know, and it. I feel like it pushed out even more EFN once it got to my house for some reason. Mm, doubt it. It was like <laughs> pancake stack at my house. It was so sticky. Remember when we did a them versus now, mm -hmm. and then we were like just covered in stickiness. Yeah, from that's my plant. true. And it was like burning through the leaves. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Bad. And like the fuzz on, or like yeah, the fuzziness on the patio mm -hmm. was like browning. Yeah, it was burning the fuzz as well. That's what happened to my serpents. Oh yeah, I threw my serpents away. It just, I couldn't get it to grow nice outside of the tent. It was so and then, nice. And then it got just eaten by spider mites and it was just like so pathetic looking. It was like this shriveled, speckled, oh, no. sad guy. I just threw it They're away. They're so pretty, but I just find them a little bit difficult to grow. A lot of it difficult. Yeah. I feel like you're either good or you're bad at growing serpents. Yeah. I mean, it was quite easy inside of the tent, but like it's not feasible to keep growing it in there all the time. Like yeah. philodendrons will outgrow the tent pretty quickly. So fast. Yeah. Oh, Lord. What? I can't believe we're, <laughs> we're still. We've been in the car for like 45 minutes and we're just getting on the freeway now. It usually takes us two minutes to get here. And I have to pee. At least it's somewhat moving now. Pretty and the road water. is not as... Well, yeah, this looks like it was salted at least. Oh my gosh, we when did we leave? An hour ago? Yeah, like 
a really long time ago and the time keeps getting further and further. It said 4.38 earlier, now it's 4.58. For your house or my house? Your house. Oh my gosh. And then imagine I still have to cross Queensboro Bridge. No. Oh my gosh, what's mine saying? I might have to pee at your house. Yeah, sure. Or in the forest. I'm gonna pee in the forest, yeah. <laughs> Be one with nature. Anywho, this week for week of, I have a lot to do. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna get it all done. I think I'm gonna film a little bit shorter this week instead of doing like a full five days. I think I'm just gonna do three just because it's a busy month. I have a lot going on. Working twice next week at North Shore. And we have a party. <laughs> yeah, we've got a party next week. We're doing a murder mystery party for Lauren's yeah. birthday party. It's gonna be so cool, but I don't know what to get her for her birthday. Oh, let's brainstorm. Okay. Wait, when is this going up? End of the month? End of the month. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um we just got her a cool present for Christmas. I know. And that was like my only good idea. I was thinking of just telling her I'll work for free for Well, I was going to say two. like we can detail her car. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that why you asked? Mm -hmm. We can make her cute little coupons. <laughs> a coupon cute little book. coupons. <laughs> yeah. Car detailing. Bathroom deep clean. Probably interior detailing cleaner stuff. Oh my gosh. You don't have an emergency, dude. You don't. <laughs> you don't have an emergency. You just want to cut the line. Yeah. You know what? Everyone just go. Just leave me here. <laughs> just, just leave, leave me here. Rot. Oh my god. Okay, oh. so anyway, yeah, I'm only going to film for three days just because busy week and lots of other filming to do. Plus I'm still filming once a week for the vlog, so it's just a lot. Holy crap. I know. You're filming so much. There are, there have been a few people that are like, why don't you just stop filming for a while? But then how will I get paid? How will I, do, have you guys seen the prices of strollers and car seats? It's a jump scare. It is a jump scare. If I could afford to not be filming right now, I would, trust me. I'm not that much of a go-getter. I do it out of necessity. I have to. So hmm. that's why I'm here. <laughs> well, it's just like, okay, for me, it like YouTube in January is like very disheartening. Just not because there's no views or anything. It's just because like you get paid literally half what you normally get paid because yeah, there's no painful. there's no ad budget for advertisers. So like for the same amount of time and work and the same amount of views you're getting half of what you normally would get i know it's so it's, sad it's crazy because like i'm just watching my views go up like i've had so much views in january but my revenue just keeps tanking and i'm mm -hmm. like this doesn't feel great <laughs> this yeah feels, which is like feels wrong <laughs> i would still i'm still want to film and make videos but like mm -hmm. um but in I, order to like mac make sure that we're not putting so much work into stuff that is not going to make us money yeah and we still have the same amount of bills to pay like we have to also make sure we figure out other things to spend our time on yeah to fill in the gaps because january is just rough <laughs> and that's YouTube. why it to me it makes more sense to do less filming days like for a week of and then work more at the shop or mm -hmm try and sell more plants and stuff to kind of make up for it yeah but that's why i've been chopping i think lauren said she got home safe did she i don't know thank you sir okay so i'm gonna cut this off because this is like <laughs> an hour of us oh my gosh um yeah but anyway, uh, don't forget to subscribe to Alice if you already don't. I will link her in the description. Um, don't think you're going to see her again during this week though, because I'm not seeing you until next, next week. week. Yeah, so, it's um, going to be done. Yeah. I'm going to see you in a bit because I'm going to show you a monster. A monster in my trunk. <laughs> a good monster. Beautiful a good monster. monster. Beautiful monster. <laughs>
Oh my god, I look so rough. I feel like I'm just gonna look like a hot mess throughout this whole video, but obviously it's the next day. I said that I was gonna film taking um, the spun like the plant out of my car, which I haven't even shown you yet, but you guys, yesterday was so insane. It took me five hours to get home. Like, it was just five hours of anxiety and trying not to panic cars sliding all over the place, black ice everywhere, my car sliding all over the place. I don't know how to drive in snow. I don't know how to drive when there's ice on the roads. I'm from California. And when my car's, when I'm going straight and my car's going this way, I'm like, okay, now what? And there's cars coming at you. It was so scary. I just, yeah, I don't even know how I made it home. I was contemplating sleeping at Alice's house because it was just like a gong show getting from my house to her house because they closed the main road. So you'd have to take back roads with all these hills inside streets that I know they didn't salt. And it was true. They didn't salt a lot of those small streets. And so a what normally is a, well, it said it said that the drive was gonna be 46 minutes to 50 minutes from my from her house to mine, but yeah, it took almost two hours. The reason that it took so long was one, road closures, and then two, cars just stopped because they're just sliding on ice, people having to find a way to go around them. Those two cars end up hitting each other. I had to like try and navigate myself out of these bad situations like i don't even i don't know how i made it home guys like it is a freaking miracle every year we get one bad snow bad snow we had two millimeters of snow and the cities never prepare properly the roads are never properly salted and it's just a show so anywho bless Alice's boyfriend's heart because what I thought was going to be a 50 minute drive home obviously turned into two hours for whatever reason my car just like would not warm up it was just so cold I was shivering I was shivering the entire time but also I, I was just like shaking out of just being so scared my heart was like beating out of my chest I was so afraid that like my blood pressure was just way too high with Archie in here and um, I'm supposed to be like walking around every 30 minutes like you're not really supposed to be sitting for long periods of time because you want blood flow and so yeah I was sitting in my car for two hours I had to pee it was just like everything that could go wrong was going wrong by the time I got home I was so mentally exhausted I like I couldn't even have like a conversation with Vince he helped me unload the car I had a, the quickest dinner ever and then I just went to sleep. Like I didn't do anything. I didn't wash my face. I didn't do anything. I brushed my teeth. I went to sleep and um, called it a night. But anyway, I'm doing this right now because I had some extra time before my haircut. But when I get home, I'm gonna show you what I got from Jesse. I'm gonna show you what I got from the shop. And um, I'm not really sure what else is on the to-do list today. Oh, um, I sold my Euphorbia, so I think I'm gonna so move that out try and see where i can fit this new plant and we're just going to be doing a little bit of this and that anyway i'm going to stop blabbing i'm going to go into my appointment and then i'll meet you back home okay i'm home and um i want to show you who i brought home yesterday and it's kind of leaning i think i'm gonna have to like do something but i want to lift it but i don't want to carry it because it's pretty heavy I might have to use my phone actually. Look, it's as tall as me. It's on the floor. It's as tall as me and it's a splendid. I'm so excited. Okay, actually, let me use my phone. I'm gonna give you a better shot of it. Look at her, you guys. She is a thing of beauty. So I got this from Jesse. I have talked about Jesse a few times on this channel already. And he grew this from a tiny little plant from Lauren. Um, he told me it's been through, it's been through it all. It's been through spider mites, it's been through thrips, EFN, but she continues to live. So there's like three or four plants on this pole and look at this pole. Oh crap, I'm in cinematic mode. Sorry. Um, look at the diameter and the massiveness of this lazy pole. It's insane. It's got a new leaf come in. I am surprised that it survived yesterday's debacle with the snow and below freezing temperatures, but I am so happy she's here. So 
Um, let me show you where I plan to put it. When it is drying off, I am going to be um, spraying it with the 99% alcohol plus my cast aisle soap just in case there's any spider mites lingering on there even though it's going to be completely isolated. If you guys watched my philodendron Q&A video, I went through a really short list of philodendron that are still on my wish list. One of them being the Sodoroy Aff slash pel Peltatum. Peltatum? Peltatum? I'm going to throw in a photo here. Uh, I used to have one, it dieted, I was very sad about it, and um, I thought about it a lot. It's one of those plants that I really enjoyed while I had it, and it's funny because I literally, in present day, I only filmed that video two days ago, and then at my last shift at North Shore, she, Alice brought down like a box of plants that we were tending to, and there was this random soda royaf in there, and I was like, mm, yep. And I gotta take a cutting home. Yep, need it. So unfortunately, the weather was so cold yesterday that this happened in my back seat. <laughs> if anyone wants to know what cold damage looks like, this is this is what it looks like. Yesterday, this was a perfectly healthy, vibrant leaf, and now it's just nothing. She also gifted me a cutting of a squamic qual because she says it's easier than the serpents. Also got really bad cold damage. So I'm just going to stump these two. We're gonna head into the plant room. I'm gonna stump these two and then I'm gonna show you another, oh, that plant's thirsty. I'm gonna show you another plant that's rehabbing right now that I'm going to chop up and um, try and get rerooted as well. Don't mind the mess I just filmed. I filmed, um, my berry harvesting video so I harvested the berries that came from my Indo Pappy hybrid and I got 150 seeds some of them were definitely unripened but we're gonna see how it goes bad news for everyone who has always loved this plant this euphorbia and has always complimented it but I sold it um, this is probably the last time you're going to see it in a video because it's going to be picked up within the next few days So I actually think I'm going to try and have the splendid live right here
Okay, so I don't love it here. I'm not gonna lie because I don't like that it's eventually gonna start covering the TV, I think, especially as it searches for light this way. And Vince is so good about my plants and never says anything ever, but I know that it bothers him if a plant is covering the TV. I really wanted to put it right here, but this is like the designated area for the high chair and I really don't wanna to have to move it somewhere else. Like I was thinking that there would be a permanent spot at the high chair or at the table here, like I'd get rid of a chair and then just put it by the table, but I like that I can set it aside. And another pro of it being right here is that it's gonna get way more light from this south facing window. I don't know, I think I'm gonna leave it here for now just cause as it adjusts, it needs um, more light than not. So this is where it'll live for now, but don't be surprised if it ends up moving. Okay, so um, along with those two rehabs, unfortunately my Hoya mint coin, I think that's what it is, uh, is not doing well after its repot. Um, you can see how crinkly and sad it is. So I'm just gonna get this out of here. I'm gonna chop it and I'm honestly, I think I'm just gonna reroute it in water. And I think I'm gonna take some cuttings to propagate and sell as well once they start looking better. So um, first things first, I need to dump out the substrate. <sighs> I am exhausted, you guys. I am, oh my God, there's a gnat flying around my camera. Come here so I can squish you. Oh, <gasps> guys, that was so serendipitous. It was like it heard my calling to meet its demise. Okay, so yeah, I'm just exhausted. Like, obviously I told you everything that happened yesterday, but I've just been tired in general and then like filming for the vlog, the same time I'm filming for this channel. And yep, we've got just a bunch of rotted roots. So I'm really not gonna try and save any of these roots. I'm just gonna be chopping them all off. Yeah, and like, I've just been doing stuff around the house to get ready for Archie nesting like crazy, selling a bunch of things. Another gnat, you want some? You see what happened to your friend? Two for two, baby. Ugh. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been nesting like crazy, selling a bunch of things, and it's just been nonstop. I feel like I can't relax, but I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer to what I want the house to look like. Oh, this whole stem is rotted, so okay, let's just, let's just chop here. I don't think that this bottom can be saved, unfortunately, so this will be trash. Oh, the sap. Here it comes. I should be wearing gloves, but I'm not. So there's this one little offset here that I think I'm going to separate. And this can be sold once it's rooted, of course. Um, same with this little guy. I will cut at the base. This one can be sold and I hope they root. I still would like to keep like a good sized plant because I actually really like this Hoya. Like she's really cute. Yeah, I've chopped sap, it's bleeding. I'm just gonna wait until it stops bleeding. And then I'm going to just get it straight into water. And honestly, I'm probably gonna try and squeeze it in to my tent somewhere where it's really warm. Hopefully it'll root pretty fast that way. Sad about it, but again, an opportunity to chop and prop because I gotta buy a stroller and a car seat. Oh gosh, my hands are sticky. All right, we've got here a lot of stem. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking whether I want to, because these have moss roots already, this Squamic wall. So I'm almost thinking I'm not gonna water root this one and I'm probably just gonna try and root it in maybe, cause I, I think I wanna do pawn to grow it. I'm growing my, where's my serpent? Where's, where's my serpent? Where's my serpent? 
I think my pond is in my pond. I think my serpents is in soil, but I don't know. I I'm just kind of thinking I want to do pond for this one. Wow, the roots already rotted off just from yesterday's travel. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna try a mix of pawn and tree fern fiber for this one to root. I'll probably just use my oh, my pole mix has has moss in it and I don't want to do moss. And then for this one, I'm just gonna chop I'm gonna chop this leaf off. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the petiole. And I think I'm just gonna water root this one, honestly, because I think I wanna try growing this one in pond as well. Okay, okay, let's go make some some pond. Oh, what? Tree fern fiber pond. I'm actually going to be mixing in a little bit of worm castings into here as well, just to give it something organic in terms of nutrients. Oh, that looks like a log of poo. And the girl who bought my Millsbo wide, she gave me a bunch of these little tiny... Oh my gosh, that's like a turd, you guys. I don't really want to touch this bare hand, but I'm going to do it. Look at this little this little turd. What is that? I don't have any more gloves. But I really don't want to be touching this worm castings with my hands. Let's see if I can just break it up using this thing. <laughs> Guys, this is like actually like a piece of poo, I think. That's, that's alarming. I'm just using some old for like pond here. I think what I'm gonna do is do some pond down at the bottom. Maybe I'll just, or I mean, leka down at the bottom. I think I'll just use whatever came from this, um, mint coin this tree fern fiber batch that I got has a lot of chunks in it which kind of sucks I hate the chunks I mean honestly if I'm doing tree fern fiber mostly I'll probably just try growing this in soil I don't know why my Spidey senses was saying pawn, but I'm open. I'm honestly open to whatever. Okay, so I think that I feel like I should label this just in case this leaf dies and then I end up with a plant <laughs> like a stump and I don't know what it is. I always think, oh, I'll remember. Like, I'm gonna remember this repot. Of course I'm gonna remember. And then I look at my tent full of like st stumps and I'm like, who is everyone? Also, you guys will probably notice it's empty back here and that's because I found, um, I found spider mites. Of course I did. And it was pretty bad too. So over the last few days, I've been like, oh, I need my phone. I've been taking each one to the bathroom, giving it a spray down, using the alcohol spray. And um, I'm just waiting for my mites to come in and we're gonna get it under control because it's always freaking something. Okay, I'm gonna use my app. I'm gonna link this in the description. This is the labeler that I'm using and I actually quite like it. I'm not really sure what else I have on the roster this week, but we will figure it out. So, anywho, um, oh wait, I need to, I'm not, I'm like, oh, bye. But I haven't even like finished what I'm doing yet. <sighs> you, water, bam. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually have um, a water prop thing going in my tent, so I'm just gonna stick this in there. Maybe let's take this down a notch. It's a little bit intense. And it looks like the sap on my Hoya has dried, so I'm gonna get that in water as well. I think, honestly, I think I'm just gonna stick these all together. Or I could stick this with my undulata. My undulata is rooting as well, but I want it to be warmer. I don't want this one to die. I would be very, very sad if this died. So I'm just gonna stick all that and then I'm just gonna stick this in here so that everything kind of stays where it is. And then I'm gonna just shove this in my tent. All right, now everybody is handled. I feel like such a hot mess today. Hopefully by tomorrow I will have like a better head, I'll be in a better headspace because the house won't be so messy and I won't be so flustered to try to film 
so many things at once but um anyway yeah i will see you tomorrow hey guys so it's been a few days since i popped um onto the wake up to film i don't even remember the last time i popped in on here i don't remember the last thing i did but i took the weekend to focus on the vlog i took the weekend to kind of get the house back in order so we are back i think this might be the last day that i film and i do have quite a bit to do so we will just get started um the first thing that i have on my to-do list today is to finally size up my Anthurium half many ix crossed with the red crystal this was a uh, joint effort between lauren and i and we are currently working on sizing them up so we have sold quite a few of the seedlings already at a really good price um i think they were 40 dollars for ones a, mm, about this size actually maybe a little bit smaller so now that there's only a few left there's not a few there's probably like 50 or 60 something left we are going to work on upsizing them and sell larger ones later down the line so right now i really just want to get them out of these little teeny tiny two inch pots so that we can see some size well so that i can see some size because lauren potted up some of the seedlings from the shop into larger pots and um they're huge already so i was like oh gosh i'm slacking also i think they were getting way too much light because they're super super bleached and chlorotic looking so i need to figure out a better light situation for them but that's besides the point anyway i am kind of excited to get these repotted. Um, I'm not gonna be going super, super big, but I'm gonna be potting it up into these plastic cups and I'm gonna cut some drainage holes only because the space in my tent is limited and I just like having to use such big pots is like really, it's really tough with the amount of space that I have in there. Okay, only one little root breakage on this one, which is good. Anyway guys, so um, like I said over the weekend, I kind of just focused on the vlog. Oh, that's gonna bother me. I need to go vacuum it. Yeah, focused on the vlog, uh, got the house cleaned and had to do a lot of editing work. So I haven't really had time to film here, but also I kind of didn't want to film because I was still feeling anxious about the whole thing driving home thing on black ice. I know it just sounds crazy to still be hung up on it, but it was so scary. And like, I just, I just had like such bad breathing for a few days after that, like because of the anxiety. And um, I feel like it's only now really kind of, well, it was starting to regulate. But then yesterday I had my 20 week anatomy scan. If you guys don't know what that is, at 20 weeks they do a really thorough scan if you're not high risk then that is typically the last scan that you get in your pregnancy so at this one they do um they measure the head they measure spine neck they get images of the heart to make sure like all chambers are there like they can rule out like some genetic conditions and stuff with this test so it does take a pretty long time um, they estimated that it would take about 30 minutes. Um, you know, I'm like super excited to see Archie again because I haven't seen him since I was 16 weeks pregnant. <sighs> Over the last, um, I would say five, four or five days, because I'm, as I'm filming this, I'm 20, 20 weeks, uh, 20 weeks, five days. So I'm almost about to be 21 weeks, starting in week 20. He has been so, so active. Like, I can feel him all the time now. Vince was able to feel him kick from the outside for the first time, which I wasn't really expecting until another few weeks because I have an anterior placenta, which means my placenta is in the front. So it kind of blocks any movement, but you can feel it from the sides at this point. And so he's been so active, like, during the day, at night. And I just kind of knew that the anatomy scan was probably gonna take longer than 30 minutes because since he moves around so much, like it would probably be hard to take those measurements. And I was right. So as soon as I laid down, she's like, oh my gosh, he won't stop moving. Like she was struggling getting like images and getting him to be in the right position. I had to keep 
shaking my belly and poking around and stuff. Yeah, it was just difficult. So on the way there, I was already feeling a bit nauseous because my nausea came back kind of like in week 19 and I was feeling fine before that. So um, yeah, on the way there, I was feeling quite sick, but by the time I got to the office, it had like completely subsided. And even when I got into the room and laid down, like I was feeling fine. But by maybe the 25 minute mark, um, I was laying there, she was getting measurements and I just started feeling really nauseous again. Like I was, I started to feel really sick again. And I honestly thought I was gonna throw up and I started like breathing a little bit different so that I can like let it pass. And she kind of noticed it and she was like, are you okay? Like, you know, your breathing changed. And I was like, oh, I just, I'm feeling a bit nauseous. I really don't want to throw up on you. And she's like, okay, like, let me know if you need to get up or whatever. Not maybe like 15 seconds later, I started to lose feeling in my feet and in my fingertips. And to me, that's usually what happens when I have a, um, a panic attack and I'm about to pass out. And I was like, okay, I recognize this feeling. I'm losing all sensation in my limbs. And then all of a sudden, like beads of sweat just start like rolling down my forehead. And um, I really feel like I'm gonna vomit. And so I was like, I, I'm sorry, like I need to get up. And so as soon as I sat up, everything just went black. Like I couldn't see anything. She's like, oh, you look like really pale. She's like, can I get your husband? And then I, passed out and when I came to, when I came back into consciousness, like my husband was like holding me like dead weight. I was like dead weight in his arms and um, he was like, you know, wiping my forehead and stuff. And so yeah, I guess I passed out. I don't know how long I was out for, probably not a very long time, but it was like a really scary feeling. And if you guys don't know, um, there's a good amount of pregnant women, not all pregnant women, but um, a good amount of pregnant women who cannot sleep on their backs or can't lay on their backs during pregnancy because the uterus compresses on, I think it's called the vena cava, um, which is essential for pumping blood in me and getting blood into the placenta and to baby. And so like when you sleep, they're like, you have to sleep on your sides. I am typically a right side and a back sleeper and sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm on my back but nothing has ever happened like they say if you're not feeling lightheaded or you don't feel sick then you're probably fine and I've never felt sick laying on my back but um, yeah at the doctor's office I think it's because I was probably on my back for a really long time like a full half hour and it was like just flat like there's i'm not like sit like usually i'm sleeping at a little bit of an angle but on the ultrasound table i'm just completely flat and so yeah it probably was compressing on those blood vessels for too long and it's scary because it can be harmful to you and the baby to a certain point if you let it get really bad and so i was like just nervous like is he okay like um, but it was nice because I, I got to continue the ultrasound and we saw he was just moving around fine He was wiggling jiggling heart rate was fine. So Yeah, it just had a little bit of a scare and it's just Yeah, it did not feel great <laughs> Passing out the feeling of just like seeing black and then like white spots when you come back to it's just yeah, it's very scary I know a few um, People have commented that they are pregnant on this channel like in my comments so yeah, if you have your anatomy scan coming up, I definitely would recommend asking your tech if you can walk around like every 15 minutes and at least be on your feet and get blood flow going for at least a full like minute or two. And yeah, don't lay on your back for a full like 30 minutes straight. I'm just adding a small layer of Leka down at the bottom of these. Whew. So yeah, like I felt like my breathing was getting back to normal finally. And then that happened and then it triggered my anxiety again. So now I'm like back where I started. So I'm like breathing kind of weird. So I just like don't want to, I'm going to try to not film for like the next few days to kind of get things back to baseline. By the way, I did restock on my um, amendments. So I'm going to show you the soil that I'm using right now for both my Ethereum and my philodendron. 
I usually buy Happy Frog, but I didn't want to make the trip all the way um, into into town, into Vancouver, just to pick up a bag. And this stuff is cheaper, and I really like it. So um, yeah, it comes with a good amount of perlite already, so it's not super super dense, and the uh, soil itself is quite fluffy and light. And yeah, it's got mycorrhizae, so. I just grabbed a bag of that since it was easily accessible to me down the street. But I'm just so happy I finally got amendments. Like I restocked on my perlite, I've got worm castings, I've got LECA, I've got soil. So we are ready to go because I have a repot and chat coming up that I need to film. I am kind of contemplating pulling off these little tiny leaves. I can see this one is pushing a new leaf. This one's not quite there. And this one is not quite there either. But this one seems to be the weakest of both of these seedlings. So you can kind of see how big these leaves are on these ones and how tiny this one is. So this one is definitely the runt of the two. I would say this one is probably the strongest. I do have to, maybe not in this video because I'm not going there until Friday, but I need to make space for the um, seedlings that are coming home with me from Lauren's because we're going to split the seeds up half and half. She's going to take care of half, I'm going to take care of half. And so I think, I think she's going to send me home with probably another 40 seedlings. And I just harvested my... Indopeppy hybrid crossed with a dark-ish forgetii. I just harvested those seeds. I'm currently filming a video that's gonna be more long form, not like in terms of like the length of the video, but like filming it over a long period of time, showing you the progression of it. So um, I have to make space for those two. So I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. I might have to like convert this bottom one, this bottom shelf here where I have amendments in the meantime to fit some seedlings. I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. And I'm also going to be trying another, two other crosses with Alice. So I'm go she dropped off some Carla Bevep and Black Crystal pollen. Well, I have the Black Crystal right here. I'm just waiting for it to develop more pollen up at the top. But I think I'm gonna try my Anthurium Brielle, which is this plant right here. It's a, uh, Crystallinum, some kind of crystallinum hybrid from Doc Block. And then I think I'm gonna try this one with the black crystal or dark crystal black, the crystal black pollen. And then since my Anthurium Crystal Mag Lux has a smaller inflow, um, I'll try that with the Carla Bevep since the that one is like the tiniest little inflow ever. Alice isn't super confident that the Carla Bevet pollen is even like viable anymore, like if it's even good, but I figure I might as well try. It doesn't hurt to try. So if those all take, we are gonna have a problem in terms of space and um, trying to grow all of these seedlings. I'm not quite sure what the plan will be, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. I would say that I can move all of these out into the living room and then do another shelf here. But then that means I'd have to take this whole EXO down just to install a shelf here. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I don't know, I might have to figure out like a seedling tray situation and yeah, it'll be interesting what I can finagle. Okay, it's a little low, but I think she'll do. I don't really like when the leaves are like in the pot, but if I do it any higher, it's gonna look, or it's gonna be kind of crazy and it's probably not gonna hold itself up. So anywho, I'm just gonna leave that. I'm supposed to be going to North Shore Tropicals this Friday, so in a few days, for her next live sale, because I wanna sell some of my plants too. But the weather, oh my gosh, you guys, like, you know, this Arctic, freeze or arctic whatever is you know hitting everyone around the country both in the states and here in canada and so it's like we're kind of teetering on that cusp of like 
it could snow or it could rain like we don't know <laughs> it's like what like one or two degrees will make a difference and it's kind of hovering in that limbo area and so i was supposed to work on wednesday so tomorrow but i told lauren i can't come in because it's supposed to snow tonight starting tonight and i'm just not confident that the cities from here to north van will have their ish together in terms of like salt making sure that things are like properly salted and i just cannot go through that trauma again and she understands but hopefully by friday like even if there's still like snow coming down or whatever like I, like i hope the roads will at least be okay so that i can make it over there but um i'm gonna still try and like prep my plants that I want to sell. I just don't know who's going to be ready. But I have one exciting prop that finally woke up. I propped this thing probably in the beginning of the year and I might have done it on this channel or it could have been like the end of summer or something. I chopped my I chopped my ace of spades from Amanda. I took a butt cut and she finally woke up and she has two growth points. I already have one leaf on it, so um, yeah, I think I might try and sell that one too. Also, I kind of want to do another regular series on this channel, so I've done the Repot and Chat series. Um, I have the Week of series, which I'm very proud of. I feel like um, that was a niche that I was able to fill in the YouTube space within the plant community, like filming a whole week of plant chores and doing like really long form videos like i'm super proud of it but it does take so much time and effort not that i'm gonna stop doing it i'm still gonna even when archie's here i want to continue doing that because it's been really great for this channel but i want to try and do another regular series maybe not something as intense as week of but just something else they don't really have ideas so if you guys have any ideas for me in terms of like something regular that I can do on this channel either every month or every other month please let me know do I have to repot any other anthurium? I should no I think I'll wait for my repot maybe I have a little tiny seedling that needs to be repot it doesn't seem like anything needs to be repot at this present moment oh look they still fit in these little cups perfection so we're just gonna keep it in here. I'm also hoping this week I can pick up meme meal. So my friend Jessica, she told me that this thing called, oh, neem cake. She told me this thing called neem cake gets rid of fungus gnats like a hot down, but it stinks like ever living crap. But I'm like, you know what? <laughs> At this point, let's just do it because I can't stand these fungus gnats. I feel like it's just getting worse and worse. So hopefully if the weather cooperates this week, I can grab some on Friday because I am just so ready to be done with this, these damn fungus gnats. They are everywhere. And some people were telling me to, yeah, put neem oil in my substrate because it worked so well for them. But I just, I don't know. I don't really like the idea of putting like an oil based thing in my substrate. I don't know why. I'm not really a huge fan of neem oil, but neem cake is like, it's like a powder. So I feel a little bit better about that. And hopefully it works because if this thing is gonna knock me out with the smell, I better at least get something out of it. But I just feel so bad because my husband will be like, oh, there's a fungus gnat in my water or I'll just randomly like see him on the couch watching TV and he's just like swatting them away. It's just so sad. I'm like, okay, it's time. I gotta get this thing under control because now it's affecting my roommate. Because the soil that I'm using is so light and airy, I expected my, um, my water, right? I expect my water to kind of fall into the bottom pretty quickly. So I wanted to be able to have a Leka layer down at the bottom to bring water back up i mean if it was just soil it would bring it back up anyway but i just feel i feel a little better when i'm using like a okay the next thing i'm gonna do is this philodendron glorious nope philodendron gloriosum 
This is my Philodendron Gloriosum Zebra. I did see um, some spider mites on it, so I want to get it wiped down because Lauren placed a bug order, so I'm going to be doing spickle mites again. So last night, I was going to film last night, but I just, I don't know, sometimes I just have so much fun doing plant chores by myself. I'm like, nah, I don't want to take the camera out. Um, but she ordered some bugs, so I'm trying to get everything as clean as possible before the bugs get here. Hopefully they'll still have something to eat, but like, I don't know, I always feel better about just kind of preventatively, not preventatively, but just kind of giving everything a good wash down before the bugs get here. And then I'm going to repot it and I think I'm gonna do a soil conversion for this. I have my philodendron mix here. The only difference between my philodendron mix and my anthurium mix is that my philodendron mix does not have tree fern fiber in it. Also, did I do that in this video? No, I think it, hmm. I did it in a video. I chopped up my undulata. Was it in my day of plant chores? I don't know why I could have sworn I did it in this video, but there's no way that can be true because look at how fast they've rooted. Like they're fully rooted now. So I need to pot these up because I'm selling some of them at the next live sale. Which video did I do it in? I don't remember. Uh, so like I have said time and time again, this mix is water, 99% um, isopropyl alcohol, uh, peppermint and tea tree, and peppermint and tea tree, um, Dr. Woods Castell soap. Some people have told me to be careful with isopropyl alcohol while I'm pregnant, but at the dilution that it is, it's fine. I also had it, um, or I also checked in with my, my midwife to see if it was okay and she said yeah as long she's like as long as you're not like inhaling the stuff and like rubbing it all over your body <laughs> I'm like no i'm definitely not doing that i wish that i had like a good solution for some of these crawlers like you know how we have like little takeout things like this for climbing plants and like whatever plants like i wish i had like a plasticky solution a light solution like this for the crawlers because I don't really know what to do when they're at this size because yeah I have crawling pots but like I'm not gonna stick this into one of my big crawling pots yet because it's still a baby but maybe that's something that I think about this year I'm sure that the like if you shop with you know those restaurant supply stores like I'm sure they have something just to like I don't know but what would you box that's like a rectangle, a hot dog, <laughs> I don't know. I think any rectangular solutions would be like styrofoam or something. Okay, yeah, just a quick wipe down. And now I need to get her out of here. I am a freaking corpse. Because I was so nauseous yesterday, I took double the amount of my nausea meds and it makes me so tired. Roots look very, very good. Let me give you a peek. It looks good to me. I don't see any root rot, nothing mushy. I don't see anything in the pond here, which is great. And I'm just gonna leave whatever is stuck onto these roots. I'm not gonna bother cleaning it off. Whoa, ho, ho, Merry Christmas. I'm gonna try and stick this as far back as possible so that it has space to grow because it's the same diameter as the last pot. It's just deeper. But yeah, I'm not, I don't wanna chop. Well, I could because it's like, no, there's some roots attached to it. I'm not gonna risk it. So it'll probably be able to live in here for another three, three leaves or something, which is okay. I can live with that. If it gives me some size, maybe I'll put it into a proper, crawling pot. I wanted to go shopping today to Muji where I get my other clear crawling pots, which it's basically just like a storage organizer. I don't know if you guys have seen it on my channel before, but it's like this semi-translucent file box thing that I use for some of my crawling plants. And I was thinking maybe they have smaller ones that I can use for plants like this size. But at the same time, I do not want to drive to the mall right now. I don't want to leave my house at all, in fact, if I can help it. 
The nice thing about these little tiny guys is that when you repot them, they have a much easier time standing on their own rather than when you're potting like those big, those big crawlers. I hate potting big crawlers. It's like one of my worst, one of the least um, favorite plant chores for sure. Um, so she's in. I'm feeling pretty good about this soil conversion. Um, hopefully I'm not jinxing myself, but I think she's gonna be okay. Uh, let's get these potted up. I think I'm gonna do LECA for these because they're water rooted and um, Lauren has voiced before that it's easier for her to ship in LECA than it is pond or soil. So anything I can do to make her job easier, I will. I don't think my sabah is rooted. Oh, it is, look at her go. This is the one cutting that I kept. I sold the big leaf at the bottom. Okay, which Hoya undulata am I keeping? Oh, it's so nice to see these perked up again. Wow. Oh, my Lanta. Okay, so I think I said I was gonna sell this one for sure. Honestly, if I could just keep a tiny one, I'd be happy. Maybe I'll keep this guy right here, this single leaf, and then I'll sell, I'll sell this one and this one. I don't know if it's gonna stand up in here. I feel like I need, I feel like I need a taller pot, ding house. I'm gonna be using some of these to-go cups for the ones I'm selling. As much as I don't really want to <laughs> sell plants with LECA that I just restocked, um, I think it'll be worth it so that they transition better for the person buying it. I'm just gonna do that. It's a nice big leaf. I'm glad they didn't like yellow and die before rooting. I wish all, I wish all Hoyas rooted this fast because it would make my life so much easier. I think that's good for this guy. And then let's add some water so there's some weight. Oh my gosh, I am hungry. What the heckaroni am I gonna eat? I have been obsessed with the, um, I've been obsessed with breakfast sandwiches lately and I'm usually not a breakfast person. Like I don't love breakfast foods. It's like my least favorite meal of the day. But since being pregnant, I'm just like, I can't get enough of breakfast. These are nice big leaves. You think I wanna keep these, but space, you know? I was telling um, Lauren that I was thinking of getting one of those big, maybe not like the Gatorade brand ones because I don't really want something that's like that bright orange in my plant room. Oh my gosh, my stomach is rumbling. Um, but I was thinking of getting like a big water cooler type things like you know that they have at like the sporting events. I'll throw in a photo here. Maybe one that's a little bit more discreet, like one that's black. Don't know exactly where I'd put it, but I was thinking of getting one for my plant room so that I always have access to water in here without having to go downstairs or having to go to the bathroom. I know that's just pure laziness, but I like convenience. I don't know if I wanna grow mine in LECA. I'm not really a huge fan of growing long-term in LECA just because, I don't know. I feel like I'm not good at it. I'm kind of thinking soil, but at the same time, I did a soil conversion on my Callistophylla. It seemed fine, it rooted, it was growing fine, and then one day it just went freaking limp again. We're gonna be chopping that up again today. Do I wanna do perlite? I mean, not perlite, do I wanna do pond? I think I do, I think I do, but I'll do a little bit of Lekka down at the bottom. As much as I love my Calistophila, I'm like, I don't think she likes me back anymore. And I'm like, do I even wanna keep it at this point? Cause it, I'm just like rehabbing it, comes back to life and then it dies back again. Then I'm rehabbing it. I don't know if I have time for that. Truly. What the heck am I gonna eat for lunch? Like we have food, but like, I'm just so ugh, grossed out by everything right now. I'm even grossed out by McDonald's, you guys. Like, who, how? How does that happen to me? 
I think 90% of my body is made of McDonald's. Don't you guys dare judge my sweet mother, but we, like growing up, we got McDonald's at least once a week, like, um, like minimum. And I just, yeah, I feel like so much of my body and my cell, like on a cellular, cellular level is made of McDonald's. And I'm just like, how can I be grossed out by it? How? It first started with chicken. I'm like, just, I haven't really been able to eat chicken. I'm so grossed out by chicken. And my mom, I, I think I might've told you guys this already. My mom, she was so like grossed out by chicken when she was pregnant with me to the point where she still doesn't really like chicken because of it. Um, so yeah, it started with chicken for me, but I was like, no, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets, that's not chicken. Like that is a chicken nugget, okay? Like I love chicken nuggets. Nope, couldn't eat it. And at the Walmart that I shop at, there's a McDonald's in there. And so right when you walk in, there's like this big McDonald's ad thing. And it's like this big, giant, crispy chicken nugget. And every time I look at it, I'm just like gagging. And then it moved into French fries. Like I don't like French fries right now. Like French fries are just like kind of gross to me. Like they just gross me out. I'm like what? They're, it's, pota it's a potato. And French fries are delicious. It's a hate crime. Um, I don't I really don't want to do this Calista Philly, you guys, but look at it. Look, look at her, read it and weep. We are back where we started. Look how sad and crinkle, crinkle town she is. But look at the roots. So healthy, took to soil so well. How can it be rooted, but it's crinkly. I mean, honestly, I have so many like of these kinds of dumpstery kinds of Hoyas in my collection. I, I, at this point, I'm like, do I even want, do I even want to exert the time and energy into rehabbing this thing? I don't know. So we're going to do the same thing. Sorry, my belly hurts. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the um, Callistophila. And I'm going to just cut cut it up into pieces, root it. If I end up keeping a cutting, I end up keeping a cutting. If I don't, then I don't. If I see another fungus gnat, I'm gonna lose it. I think after this, I'm gonna have to take a little bit of a break. Go have lunch. Make some lunch for my Vincent. And then um, I'll come back. I shall return. don't need her anymore. I'm gonna regret throwing that when I can't find it. All right, you. Like, typically if I knew I was going to um, repot, I wouldn't have watered it so recently. I watered it two days ago, but I just wanted to see if the hydration would come back, and <laughs> it didn't. So now we're just gonna have to get dirty. Oh, okay. Well, the roots are um, misleading because they're all rotten. Look at this. It's all strings. <laughs> it's just strings. Um, I'm not even gonna bother, I think, with this. Well, okay, let's see how much I can get off. I really don't wanna touch wet soil. By the way, sorry. I've just been getting a lot of like pregnancy advice um, in my comments. So a few people were like, stop touching soil um, with your bare hands. This is another thing I talked to my OB and my midwife about. Um, I pretty much got all my plant questions out of the way when I first got pregnant. But they say to use gloves when you're handling outdoor soil because of the cats that roam around the neighborhood and poop in the soil because you can be at risk for toxoplasmosis or something like that. But indoor soil is um, generally fine as long as you wash your hands after and you're not like um, eating it or anything, which I don't plan to eat the soil. I don't know if you guys have heard of pica, P-I-C-A. It's like this weird phenomenon where pregnant women crave strange things when their body is like deficient in something. Like some people crave cornstarch, some people crave bleach, some people crave dirt. Like things you're not supposed to be eating 
they crave it. I have been craving lately. Pudge has this one dog treat that's like dehydrated fish. Every time I give him one, I have to like smell it. It's so gross. It's so gross. I'm grossed out by it. Trust me, I don't like that I, it just feels sick. It feels wrong. Um, that seems dead. Okay, I can see some. I don't know if this is all dead, but whatever. What was I saying? Yeah, oh, so yeah, I'm not gonna eat the dirt. <laughs> I'm not craving dirt or anything. I will not be eating it at this time. Um, chop here. Okay, so this bottom cutting, I will try and root. I think I'll do a two leaf cutting here. Like this. It's kind of sad topping this up. This has been like years, maybe what? A year and a half, two years of growing this thing this big. Cutting three. I probably will keep a cutting of it just because it was, it's like, it's been one of my favorite Hoyas. Four. Five. Six. Oh my god, this whole stem is just so wrinkled. And then, let's do this one. Like this. Oh my gosh, I have so many cuttings. Let's see if I end up keeping it. Oh gosh, there's stuff everywhere. Okay. I do have a thing of water here. I'm not even going to change it out because it's probably got some good rooting vibes in here because of the Callistophila. I mean, the uh, Undulata. Actually, I'm going to have to change it out because of the sap. But I'm not going to let it callous because I want water to like get into here as quickly as humanly possible because it's so wrinkled but it's going to be tough because these cuttings are so itty bitty so i'm hoping that they all hold themselves up together and they can be like one floating lifeboat i'm just going to stick them in like this i hate chopping hoyas because it freaking Leaks sap everywhere. Well, there she is, a bouquet of Callistophila. I'm just gonna shove it back here where it was and hope for the best. Okay, let's see what else was on my to-do list. I am going to be taking a break though because I am starving. Starving. Um, pot, upside coughs, did that. Gloriosum. I was going to take you guys to water my living room shelf, but I did that yesterday, like I said, and I had so much fun. Some days are funner than others, for sure, but like, I wiped down every single leaf out there. I um, fertilized, I watered, I trimmed back leaves. It was a great time. Um, I have one Florida Beauty cutting here that I do need to pot for the live sale, and I'm also going to do LECA. Some of you guys might disagree with this decision, but I decided I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to keep a plant for myself, a Florida beauty. I kind of feel like my time with it is like I'm good. There are other plants that I want to add to my collection, philodendrons, that I just don't I just don't see myself loving this long term. We had a good run. There was a point where she was like my favorite at certain points, but in general, I just, I gravitate toward the green plants, you know? So I was thinking of like keeping one as just like a, a cash cow, <laughs> like keep growing it, propagating it, selling it. Cause I'm, I'm kind of thinking of ways that I can still utilize plants as a way to make extra money when Archie is here, just cause like we have to save for, daycare and things like that, child care. Um, ideally, please don't judge me. Ideally, I would love to have a part-time nanny um, in-house so that I can work and then take care of Archie in the evenings. But that's gonna cost a lot of money too. But yeah, I just, in general, I just think 
I don't really need a Florida beauty anymore. And if I end up regretting it, the good thing is, is I always have Lauren and she um, always has plants that I, she has all the plants I would ever need and want. And where goes all my LECA? Okay, so this is the last, oh, it has a little bit of roots and it has like a little slug attached to it. Look at that, can you see it? Oh, gross. Um, ew, it's like a little bugger. Can you please get off? You're not wanted here. Okay, um, do I get this into Lekka now and just continue that rooting process or do I keep it in? No. Uh, <laughs> what do I do? Oh my gosh, look at this guy. This one's probably all rotted. Ew, 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 ew. Um, um, um. You know what? I think I, I think I'm gonna keep this in water for a little bit longer, but I need to go change out this water because it's gunky. I am so messy here. Um, I have some new water. I'm just gonna shove this guy in there, put him back. And then I think for this little tiny one, I'll probably just do like a little cup like this in Lekka. Okay, so I potted up all the cuttings. Gotta get some water in it before it dries out. But I'm gonna go eat because I like feel my stomach caving in on itself. Um, but when we get back after this commercial break, what are we gonna do? I need to do some pole maintenance. I have to extend, I know I have to extend one pole. I need to fill some poles, get like the tape, Hugo's tape on it so that it actually climbs it things like that, and then um, I need to handle this guy, this very sad, sad, sad white fry deck. The uh, substrate, it's in, um, what is it, in? what is this, what's that called? Uh, Fugal stratum, it, the algae, it's just, it's so gross. So I wanna handle that too, and I think that'll be all we do in this week of. So anyway, ad break, food break. Oh my god, my stomach always hurts after I eat because it gets so much bigger and it just feels like my skin is stretching. Pregnancy is so weird, dude. So the reason that I've kept this one and have not chucked it out is because all of my other Florida, Florida, all of my other fried eggs that were pushing out nothing but white leaves eventually pushed out green. So this one is just either going to be white or it's just taking a longer time to push out green. And I'm just not really ready yet to part with it. Um, this corn, corn, <laughs> that corn exploded. Oh, gross. Ooh, it's got like a little bubble. All right, just wanna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna leave a bit of the stratum that's connected to the roots and then I'll transition it to, what am I transitioning it to? I could do pond, could do pond. Yeah, I'll just reuse the pond that I used for my Gloriosum. But I do wanna clean this out because it's yucky. Where did my fry get go? Oh, it's still in there, okay. Gruel. Oh, my lantel. Look at this. What is this? <laughs> Guys, it looks. I can see a corm, some kind of alocasia. I found it in the Gloriosum pond. That's interesting. I have no clue what it could be. But. We'll see. Isn't that funny when that happens? It's either like it pops up in your vessel once it's potted up, or it pops up in your set, like your your boxes where you keep your amendments. I think I'm gonna chop off these ugly leaves. So this guy here, and then this ugly big one. 
These are the two leaves that are left. Hopefully we can get some green. Um, I'm gonna give it about another maybe month, month and a half. And if it's still white, then um, yeah, I'll do away with it. Also, there was someone who messaged me and was interested in buying a white fry deck. Um, I can't I can't find your messages. I was trying to search in my DMs and I just I couldn't find it. Could you please message me? Don't message me on Instagram because though my DMs are a hot freaking mess right now, I lose everything. Could you like email me or something? I know that sounds weird, but it's just easier for me to keep track of things in my email because then at least I can use the search function. Um, my email address is connected to my uh, my YouTube page. It's on my like about my about page because yeah, if this one doesn't give me variegation in the next month or so, then yeah. Um, if you don't want to buy it still, then I will just chuck it out, and I wouldn't charge you for the actual plant. Just shipping. <laughs> okay. All right, so this one's good. The pond is actually quite wet, but I am gonna add just a little bit of water before I seal it back up. And then get her lid back on. Oh, she looks so much better. She looked pathetic in that. In that other substrate. Okay, so she's done. I don't even have the slightest clue what this could be. There's a little bit of a reddish or like a pinkish tint to it. And if I had to make any guesses right now, I'm gonna say it's a cupria. But when did I repot my cupria? It's been forever. A mystery. All right, she's in you guys. That was very, very unexpected. But plants just keep you on your toes. All right, the last thing I need to do, I'm just gonna make some space here, is I need to do some full maintenance, which is another plant chore that I loathe. I loathe it, I really, I really do. I don't like maintaining poles, and I get why some people don't choose to use poles, and I don't blame you one bit. It is a pain in the booty. Before I do that, actually, I want to sift this thing really quickly and I'll show you how I do it. I don't have a huge batch, but um, I need to get this Lekka and Pond separated. So it's not a lot, but this is a batch of substrate that had a lot of like really small broken roots. So I'm gonna be putting it back into this bin, which is my batch of Pond that has a lot of broken roots that I often will mix in with my soil, but because I'm so low on LECA and I'm very stingy with my LECA, um, I'm going to sift it out so I can add the LECA back into my LECA bin. I'm going to be using this grade strainer because I need all of the pond to fall through and just keep the LECA. Look what I found. Oh, that was Pudge. Perfection. So you can see it just caught all of the LECA with the exception of some things like the fur bark and whatever, but it's so easy to just like pick those out. And I have two types of LECA right now. So I have the new like lightweight ones from Lauren and then I have these old school ones. I don't love these so I'm mixing it into this batch and I'm just gonna keep the um the lightweight one in my bin. This is just like so much easier than picking it out manually and if you have to do this with soil just allow the soil to dry out completely and you can do the same thing. Easy peasy. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is this Soderini, I think, because I need to actually 
extend the pull completely, but now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even know if I have the right size. Oh no, here she is. The pole is pretty much as tall as the plant now. So I'm just gonna be removing some of this. You don't have to. It's just, I think if you guys know me, you know that whenever I can peel a sheath, I will. And it's so satisfying. Okay. It's not perfect, but I've been able to expose a nice little aerial root that kind of looks like a nipple right now. And I'm gonna fill a little bit and then I'm gonna stack. I don't think I'm gonna have enough substrate to work with, unfortunately. So I'm gonna wet it a little bit. I don't even know if I have any more moss, you guys. You might have to do solely tree fern fiber. Who else do I need to extend? That actually might be it. I think the rest I just have to like add Hugo's tape. So this might be enough for what I need. I might not be able to fill the pole all the way, but I at least can get the extension in. And then the next time I'm at Lauren's, I will grab some more moss. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more to here. I'm not gonna fill it all the way though. And let's see if I can find a pole that's this exact size. Pretty sure it's this size here. Yeah, and it looks like it's on the biggest clip or the last wait second this one please work sorry you can't really see what i'm doing but i'm essentially just extending this guy now the problem is shoving it in it's not really a problem, it's just it can be tricky sometimes. This one looks like it's gonna be pretty seamless. Okay, I think that's good, but I do think I wanna stick a bamboo stake in here just for a little bit of stability. throwing up or if he's playing with his toy. This is so messy. I got a question in a last Q&A. I opened up my questions to um, a Q&A uh, regarding philodendron. And um, somebody asked me if I, like how often I fertilize my poles. And in a perfect world, I would be fertilizing them just as much as I fertilize everything else. Oh my gosh, it's so messy. Um, yeah, in a perfect world, I would be, but I don't. But one thing you can do if you are not good at fertilizing poles like I am, you can actually add some slow release fertilizer to your substrate in the pole. And that way it's at least getting something, you know? But obviously you have to remember to water the pole. I haven't added any slow release. I haven't added any slow release. <laughs> I haven't added any slow release fertilizer to mine just cause I uh, forget, but I should, I could, I should, I could. I've also seen some people put little, um, they'll put it in like one of those little mesh bag little mesh baggies and then they'll stick it at the top of their pole so that when they water it, it like waters into the pole. But I have not really, I haven't done that myself. Whoa. 
Okay, I think that's good actually. I don't feel like I really need to go all the way to the top. But I do need to like kind of push things down a little bit. Okay, now that I've made a proper mess, I think I'm good. Pole is extended. Um, this one is actually just living in my living room right now, so the height of it is not an issue. It would have been, I think, if I still had it in here. Okay, let me clean this up. This one is gonna need an extension soon, but that's a job for another day me and not today me. Cause I only have 15 minutes to wrap this video before Vince jumps on to his meeting. But all I wanna do is get this to stay. Now, if I could keep humidity higher where this is at, this plant would naturally find the pole, but this pole dries out so fast and so often that it's just like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's fulfilling its purpose. Like I do have like a good root system at the bottom of this pole. So if I ever need to chop it, that would be good. But I really should be actively trying to keep this pole wet. Um, on a more regular basis is what I'm saying. Like see how freaking dry it is right now. And then once it's back in the EXO, I will give it a spray. Um, and then who else? Probably my, I think maybe just my Esmeralda. I don't even know if I'm calling this by the right name. This little guy, this dude. I chopped off a lot of its leaves because it's just too much. Like, I think I chopped off like four, four leaves. One, two, three, four. I chopped off five leaves actually. So all I'm really gonna do is try and get this snug to the pole as snug to the pole as possible. This one is so dry too. I'm gonna just pull this one tight because it's starting to lean forward now. now she's all good and all set all right guys so that is all i have in me today that's really all i had on my to-do list anyway so i think i'm gonna cut it here it's probably gonna be a shorter a much shorter week of but like i mentioned january is just rough for creators so um i'm gonna get going thank you guys though for being here for another week of this month <sighs> got some stuff done, not a ton, but um, I have a few repot and chats coming up in the queue where we're going to get a lot more things done, um, and theoriums upsized, things like that. So, anywho, um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you to everyone who's been here from the beginning. Um, hello to all of the new subscribers. Happy to have you here. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.